This is Twit. All right, the right to repair. We're talking to Kyle Weens, co-founder of iFixit, uh, a great advocate for the right to repair. Explain a little bit. I mean, we used to, it used to be that you bought stuff, and then you could fix the stuff because you've bought it. Why is that not true anymore? <laughs> I think it's as there's some inevitable process where companies get big, and then it gets big enough where you know people are out there fixing things, and then the manufacturer starts to provide their own repair service. And then they realize, hey, we're competing with these local folks. What uh, is there a way that we could take business away from them and grow our slice of the re repair pie? Uh, we see this happening in industry after industry. Uh, and the only industry that's ever successfully fought back has been the automotive uh, world, where your local independent mechanic can fix any car. Uh, and the reason that they can fix any car, even the new crazy computerized ones, is because there are there are right to repair laws that have been passed that protect their ability to do that. In other industries, like for example, camera repair, the, the SLR cameras, every photographer that has one, if it breaks, of course they're going to fix it. Well, it used to be the local camera shops could, could do those repairs, but several years ago, Nikon decided that they were going to stop selling service parts to the local independent camera shops. And within, within I'd say a matter of months, maybe a year or two, thousands of camera stores around the US went out of business. Uh, and, and Nikon's rationale was, well, People are going to get it fixed either way. They'll just mail it in to us rather than taking it to a local shop, and we'll be able to grow our, our repair business. But what happened in actuality is it just created another friction point for people with cameras. They stopped going to local uh, shops. Local shops closed down, and, and they switched to using their phones, and it kind of hastened the death of, of the, the, the camera industry. Um, and so we, we've seen this kind of approach play out in other industries. The TV companies used to provide local uh, local shops and used to have a TV repair guy in your neighborhood that would come and swap a tube and the TV manufacturers would share schematics. And it was this happy symbiotic place. Uh, and that went away. TV manufacturers stopped providing information. Um, so I think, I mean, this is a, there's an overarching trend where manufacturers are going to tend to monopolize service because they can. And it's really up to society to decide, well, do we want to protect and incentivize repair or not? And so in the case of cars, we've decided uh, that we want that. We passed lots of right to repair laws. The most recent was in Massachusetts in 2012 and then expanded nationwide. But we haven't passed those kinds of protections for other kinds of products. So when you're saying the right to repair, you're not just talking about um, the right for me to repair my device, but for local repair shops to for the, right. the, the one that you worked at when. Yeah. Yeah. This is all about control. It's a question of who can do the work. Is it, is it only the manufacturer and their authorized shop? So at Apple, it would be Apple and the Apple stores, or is it something that, that, you know, I could do at home or I could go and hire a professional. Mm -hmm. And so, so what you, you spell this out really well on the repair.org. Um, what, what do you believe is the right, our rights to repair? Yeah, well, fundamentally, I think that, that if you own it, uh, you don't really own it unless you can open it, right? So I think people should have should have access to tools uh, to be able to open our things. We should have access to software if it's needed in order to fix it. Maybe you need diagnostic software in order to connect and fix your tractor. Uh, and, and we need access to parts. So it's really, I mean, it's it's just the fundamental building blocks of what you need to be able to maintain something. You need you need you need information. You need tools. You need parts. And so let's let's talk about the new Mac, the T uh, T2 chip, which Apple yeah. um, talked about. Well, it's for security, but there's something else in that chip that will make it harder for um, people to repair their devices on their own. Yeah. So, uh, and we didn't know this when we when we took it apart. So I've got this is the new uh, MacBook Air with uh, I took the we took the fingerprint sensor off with fingerprint sensor, and so this has a T2 in it. Uh, and then you get the battery and actually don't have the logic board in front of me. Um, uh, so the T2, this new, it's got the secure enclave for the, the, the Touch ID sensor. But what Apple is saying is that they're going to restrict uh, access to repairs uh, to people that have uh, Apple's diagnostic software. So they've got fancy software. You plug it in um, uh, to another machine, run it, uh, or you can, you know, you boot off a, a USB drive or whatever. And if you install a new part, you have to use Apple's diagnostic software to synchronize the new display or the new logic board with the computer in order to make it work. Uh, and that's a that's a new approach. Uh, we are very concerned about that because, I mean, like I fix it. What we do is we sell displays and, and main boards and things to help people uh, repair their machines. So if all of a sudden you can get the new part, maybe you can take a part from another computer, but, but if you can't 
tell the the phone to talk to it or the, the computer to talk to it, then you're then you're out of luck. Uh, and so we're not sure if this is. I mean, it really feels like it's a guillotine hanging over the neck of the repair industry. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be something that's that's in effect, you know, soon, or if it's it's something that they're just talking about to keep their authorized repair shops in line. Um, but it's a it's a pretty concerning development. But it, this isn't in the set. Like I have the the MacBook with the Touch Bar, and it has a fingerprint um, sensor, but th that doesn't have the same. Uh, we don't know. It's got a T two chip as well, and so it could be they roll out a software update and 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 prevent repairs of everything. We have not seen that yet. And in our testing, we've been swapping parts and they've been working so far. But according to the service bulletin that, that Apple sent out this spring that's leaked, they're, they're telling repair shops that you have to synchronize every new part with the software. So the concern is that we could get in a situation like what caused error 53 mm -hmm. uh, last year, or the year before, where um, People were swapping parts. They, they were fixing iPhones, putting new screens on iPhones. Everything worked fine. And then Apple rolled out a software update and bricked phones that had been repaired six months or a year beforehand. Uh, were, so we need to see some some kind of guarantees from Apple. Uh, and I think it's really interesting because Apple, on the one hand, is fighting right to repair legislation. They're, they're, they're fighting against the solution. And, and at the same time, they're doing everything they can to lock down repairs. Uh, it seems like if they keep acting like this, they're going to guarantee that right to repair passes because society isn't going to stand for it.